Hey guys, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning here tonight to chat about this new Billie Eilish album, When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? Billie Eilish is an L.A. pop songstress, and for the last few years I've kind of been really confused by her popularity. Like, her 2017 EP, Don't Smile At Me. Like, I do not know how people enjoyed this album. I really don't. For me, in pop at the time, this was like the lowest of the low by far. It was just such pop garbage, incredibly boring. And some of the ballads here, I just wasn't into it at all. Now, ever since, Billy has really got this kind of meteoric rise to fame. Like, apparently, she broke a lot of records with her album pre-sale. And has just been basically everywhere, getting big slots at festivals and shows, etc. And now, honestly, ever since, Billy's dropped a ton, and I mean a ton of singles surrounding this new album, and I have actually loosened up to them. I've actually enjoyed a lot of them quite a bit. So without further ado, let's chat about Billie Eilish's gigantic debut album. After a short and kind of unnecessary intro, we get Bad Guy. And honestly, I don't think that this is really a bad pop tune at all. As a matter of fact, I think it's one of the best tunes here. I love the very sleek, very dark vibe to this, and Billy's very mysterious performance here is genuinely captivating. Little details like that really fantastic bass groove and those finger snaps are really nice. As a matter of fact, it's just a very otherworldly pop tune, and it's in moments like this that I really actually kind of get what Billie Eilish is all about. There's some very alien vibes here between those sort of goofy synths and the very urgent feel to all these verses, but none of it comes off too goofy. At the end of the day, I just think it's a really great track, and it's a great introduction to Billy's sort of gothic approach to pop music. I don't even mind the heavy use of vocal effects here. And that last 40 seconds, where things shift into this absolutely hulking, monstrous beat is really classy as well. As a matter of fact, a lot of the singles here are just a genuinely great alternative to mainstream pop music. When it comes to You Should See Me in a Crown, like, I totally get it. I actually think her approach to tension here is brilliant, like to the point where this chorus comes along and explodes, it's actually really exciting. The verses are super chilly, the chorus gets me going every time, like I don't have anything bad to really say about this. And most importantly, Billy here comes off absolutely dripping in personality, which is absolutely integral to this. This album rolls on with All the Good Girls Go to Hell. Once again, I actually really like the sort of over-the-top feel to this album. Like, at times, this is so ridiculously cheesy, just so unbelievably edgy. But I think it actually comes off as a freaking blast. This may not be, like, as much of an in-your-face pop banger, but I can still really get to this. Like, when you really break it down, this track has all the makings for some weird novelty tune. But because Billy has such a big personality, this ends up coming off pretty easy to swallow. And I have a lot of the same feelings on Bury a Friend later on. The very hypnotic, otherworldly groove, and the sort of grisly and dark feel to it. I love it all. It's just such a dangerous feeling tune, and I love the almost tribal beat that we get here. It's a genuinely compelling tune that once again just oozes character. Like, it may get depressing and really painfully real at times. But for a few short minutes, once again, I really do feel like I get Billie Eilish. But then we have early tracks like Zanny, and honestly, I don't get the hype at all. This track is easily my least favorite here. It is so boring. Most of the best tracks here have really great production and booming beats, but guess what? When there's nothing else to back up Billie on some of these slower tunes, it makes tracks like this just an absolute bore. Like, hearing how great some of her more booming pop tunes are on here, who the hell called for this kind of ballad? I hate to say it, but there's just no heart on tracks like this. I have a lot of the same feelings on When the Party's Over. Like, there's certainly a market for these very dreary, dreamy, emotional ballads. But in this environment, I cannot take Billy seriously to save my life. Billy's performance here is just so faceless and not nearly as powerful. Like, some of the other ballads here I may not be 100% into, but at the very least, they come off heartfelt. But this track just does not click with me at all. I feel like Billy's main problem are these ballads. And holy hell, 8 is even worse. Like, I'm sorry, but I cannot take her strumming her little ukulele and doing these bizarre vocals seriously. It's borderline obnoxious, and all of a sudden I'm just getting all of these horrible memories of her first EP. Like, when she's being herself here and she drops all the gimmicks, I actually think her performance is actually pretty alright. But Billy has so much personality. Why she would throw it away for a track like this is genuinely confusing to me. 
with my strange addiction, like I can't help but just ask questions when it comes to this. Now this one isn't my least favorite track here. As a matter of fact, when it's on, I think it's got some pretty groovy elements. Like I actually really love this idea of her lover being her strange addiction. And the very dark, sleek performance here is actually really captivating. But why in the world is this track like battling back and forth from legitimate pop elements to extensive quotes from The Office? We get like tons and tons of samples here from that episode with Threat Level Midnight. It's just so weird. Am I missing something? And I'm sorry, but I'm not really that into Wish You Were Gay either. Now here, I feel like the sentiment is here for sure. I like the sort of live vibe that this one gives off. And to be honest, I think Billy's heart is completely in the right place. As a matter of fact, her performance is great. But once again, when the booming beats and this very glitzy production kind of eases off, I just feel like Billy still has so far to go, especially when it comes to these ballads. Late the album, we get Ilo Milo, and honestly, I don't completely hate it. As a matter of fact, I think her very bubbly performance here, alongside the very twisted sound that a lot of these tracks have, is actually pretty awesome. And the glitchy production here makes this one really hard to follow, and really exciting at times. While this track is one of the most straightforward of the bunch, we hear Billy here really being herself, and that's really all I want to hear from her. Tracks like Listen Before I Go, again, just don't really hit home with me. Now, as far as a ballad goes, this actually might be the best here. As far as her vocals go, these are stunning. But that's where this track starts and finishes with me. Instrumentally, this is just so freaking bland. By the end of this track, I'm literally practically asleep. But if you get this track, like, I do understand that there's tons to love here. As a matter of fact, I feel that way about a lot of tracks here, even if I don't necessarily love them. Then we have I Love You, and let me tell you, right about now, I did not need another dreary ballad. Once again, to say that this isn't, like, an incredibly emotional ballad with some great vocals and deep personal lyrics would be a flat-out lie. But I feel like tracks like this are just missing something. That little extra hook that really grabs your attention. My overall issue with this album is I feel like Billy just kind of flops in the middle of being a genuinely different alternative pop artist with some crazy ideas. And just being more of the same that we're hearing in pop right now. And just so damn boring. But I think Goodbye as a finale actually ends off the album in a really big, wonderful way. It's the sort of glamorous finale that I wasn't really expecting to hear from Billy. Love the production here, and I love the looming bass that's just out of reach. And while they're absolutely drenched in vocal effects, I actually really love the harmonies here. They, they may just be my favorite of the album. And you know that there's some genuine issues with the rest of this album when I feel like Billy is showing more emotion here in two minutes than she has in five on some other tunes. So believe it or not, I feel like Billy's debut album is far from the faceless pile of garbage that I was fearing from a distance. When this album is rolling between the spooky atmosphere and the gigantic production, Billy comes off with some genuinely fascinating alternatives to the modern pop sound that I think are needed right now. But some of the little details here, and when it comes to some of these ballads, it's very clear that Billy still has a far way to go. But this is still so far from the mindless pile of garbage that I was expecting to hear here. So for me, I'm feeling a decent six on this album, but let me know what you guys think down below. If you like the video, be sure to like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you guys would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, guys.